All right, so continuing from the previous lesson, uh, we will make a spotlight. Okay, so this requires a bit of math. Now, the advantage of using uh, VEX was that there was a direct distance node in there, which was very, which would make it very easy for you to make a radial gradient. You can't do that uh, in Material X because there's no distance node. So the way it works is I found a nice tutorial by uh, someone called Brian Ryan. Okay, and he has this great tutorial, like it's pretty short, it's like just four minutes on how to make a radial ramp uh, using Material X. So, because I'm not very good at maths, uh, he kind of explained the maths to it, which is uh, if you take the, like let's say we have X, let's say we have X and Y, and uh, we take a constant of 0 0.5, which is like the center. So if we take, x minus 0 0.5 and then we square it and then we take y minus 0 0.5 and we square that too and then we take both these we take the x square plus y square and we do a square root of this or I, i've completely forgotten the math of this but anyways if you do a square root of this so this gives you a radial gradient God, my handwriting is horrible. Okay, but that's the math of it. So the way it works is we're going to jump in here. I'll go back to standard and I'll duplicate the gel filter or actually no, let's keep that. Uh, I'll get rid of this. Okay. Uh, I'll break this apart. Like we'll bring it here. I'll just duplicate like these two guys. So control C, control V. Okay, which is the light projection and the separator and uh, what we want to do is uh, take a constant and this will be a vector 2 and it will be like 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 and this will also separate it. I think we can just take a single constant which should be 0 0.5 but let's say if you want to move them around separately it's better to have this. And so the first thing is we need two subtract nodes. So x subtracts with this x and then the y subtracts with this y. And then we square this. So to square it, we just multiply it, you know, together. Okay, like the, it'll just go in both the inputs. So this will give me a square. And then we take a square root of this Sorry, we need to add them together. Forgot, I forgot that part. Yeah, so add them together and do a square root and then just invert it. And that's it, right? So if I plug this into the tint and I do a render, I get this. Okay, you just have to come back here. We'll have to, I must have tweaked this around here. So just keep this one and one and keep this to zero and zero. And there you go, like if I move this around, so you will be able to move it around and turn off the orthographic projection. Yeah. So what I can do now is if I take a constant node and I just plug this into the U scale and the V scale and start to increase this, so you can make it, you know, like this, this sort of controls the size of it. As long as you don't go down, like at zero, it just breaks it. But less than that, see, it gives you like a really nice, you know, you can control the cone of it. So this is fine. Uh, let me just take this light and maybe adjust it a bit. So I'll just bring it up here and rotate it downwards. So we get like a proper, you know, like a spotlight. And maybe lower the intensity a little. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now I can start doing something a little more fancy with this. So let's say if you want to do like, uh, like a spotlight, like when you, when a torch shines, you get like, you know, like rings of light in there because it's, light passing through a glass so you get like caustics. So what we can do is, uh, if I take, like I'm gonna put this to a, into a color ramp. Okay, so let's just take a color cubic. And we're gonna use this as coordinates to control a noise map. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a noise map and I'll take Material X Noise 2D. Or actually no, let's take a Material X Noise 3D. Okay. So take a noise 3D and this comes into position. So when a radial gradient feeds into noise, what you end up getting is, I'll set this to 
I will set it to float. We don't need a color variation of this, but we'll get this. And then I can start to do some more interesting things with this, which is if I put a multiply in the middle, uh, this gives me like more bands, see. Okay, so you can do, you know, and then if you also put an add in the middle, this gives you like uh, offset. So you can sort of move it around. See, there you go. Yeah, there you go. That's not bad. Now, what I also want to do is maybe we can put a clamp on this so that it doesn't, uh, you know, go into negative values. But what we want is we don't really want this to, uh, we want to do a couple of things, right? First of all, the center part should remain bright. Okay, so we can add this to, uh, you know, the basic gradient that we have, like, which is, you know, like this guy, we can just, like, this is the standard gradient that we want. But let's do one thing. Let's, uh, let's take another color ramp so we can, you know, get a little more control on this. This will be my, you know, basic color. So I can kind of, you know, like if I want, I can make it bigger or smaller. And then I can take an add and if I can, if I want, I can add it to this. So I'll get, you know, that. But the problem that happens here is like, if I do an offset, it kind of goes out. Okay. And we wanted to remain limited to this beam. Okay. So what I can do is I can multiply this with this basic radial gradient that we have. Okay. So I can take a multiply here, you know, at this point and I can actually just plug in this guy. Okay. Like we can, like what I can do is I can probably take like a, I can take a float ramp, okay, and multiply that over here. So what happens is that if I just check this, okay, see, if I take the pivot value and move it out, see, it won't go beyond that because now it's multiplying with, with this little radial gradient that we have. So that gives me, you know, the overall setup that I want. Okay, so I can like increase the amplitude of this, see. So you get like more beams or less beams, you can move it around. So it looks a little more fancy. Oh, that looks nice. Yeah. So the advantage of this is like you have a fully customizable, you know, like I can adjust the cone size of this. And then you can color it, you know, so I can just take all of this, do a separate, so do like separate color. And we can feed this into a color ramp. So now if I take this and maybe I make it infrared, you know, so you can get stuff like this. Let's keep the final color to black. You know, so it doesn't go beyond that. Or we can do like, I don't know, like twilight or, you know, like any of those things. We can kind of just play around with. Let me just go to like black and orange. I think that looks nice. Yeah, so it's a slightly bigger setup than just making like something coming out of a doorway. Uh, let's try to do orthographic projection and let's try to make it bigger. Yeah, that's not bad. You know, so if you want like a perfect circular projection, you can do that. But yeah, I think this is, this is more, you know, this looks more natural. And just use like the U and V offset to move it around if you want to. Otherwise you can just move around the light, like it's connected to the light, right? So if I just come in here and I, you know, move the light around, that will be perfectly fine as well. The other thing that Karma XPU also doesn't do is like, if you have, uh, like the color temperature multiplies better at CPU level. Okay. Like if I do this, it gives you a better result than you would get with, uh, with XPU. But anyways, that's pretty much it. So this is how you can do like a spotlight. And as a third example, we'll take a look at uh, how to do like a caustics projection. So we'll like try and sort of distort some noise maps and see what we can get.